And whenever you guys are ready, you can go. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jack Moran. This is Bill Patel, Britton Smith, and Andrew Swanillis. Yeah, I'm a uh, board volunteer to uh, untangle this rope for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. No way. Do I have all day to work on this? All day. Yes. All day. Okay. If you get too frustrated, you can just stop. All right. I can't get too much. 27 minutes. I want you to think about what you can do in 27 minutes. Read a chapter of a book, take your dog for a lengthy walk, or watch an entire episode of Phineas and Ferb. This is the average time a boater spends tending to their rope throughout a boating day. Reeling it in, undoing the knot, taking it in and out of storage. And you may be thinking to yourself, that's not true, that just seems like too much time. You have to think every time a skier falls, you have to hold the rope up so it doesn't get caught in the prop go back around to the skier. If a new skier wants to come, you have to reel in the rope again manually, throw it back out. There's a lot of things that go into that. This leads me to our solution, which is rope reel. Rope reel is a tape measure-like mechanism that mounts to the top of your boat. You put your pre-existing line into our product. It uses a spring-loaded reel, so you pull the rope out to the designated length, lock it into place just like a tape measure. Once you're done, you unlock it, comes right back in in no time, no effort, Tangle free and it also doubles as a nice place for you to keep your rope out of sight, out of mind. Alright, I want to introduce you guys to Daniel Ephraim, and he's a great example of our target customer. Daniel Ephraim has been boating since he was a little kid and still loves to do it to this day. His love for boating has forced him to buy a lake house on the, on the water, and he loves to enjoy water sports, play golf, and just some all, overall just fun activities. He makes over $250,000 a year. And that is to support his three kids and then his wife. Oh, and did I mention his three kids are eager to join the boating industry and he wants to introduce it to them using rope reel. So the market size for Americans who own a boat is $1.5 billion, but we're only targeting a fraction of those boaters who participate in water sports and have a boat capable for water sports, which is $14 million. And from our surveys and interviews, we've learned that roughly 60% of boaters said that they would actually purchase our product, so that leaves us with a serviceable adjustable market of $8.4 million. Uh, we have two indirect customers, the first being the Velcro bell strap. You can get 10 of the Velcro straps for $25. Uh, they are customizable in only the way that you can control the size of the coil and store it, uh, but it's very time and effort consuming to reel in the wet rope, coil it, and fasten the Velcro straps, and then store it. Our second indirect competitor is the Airhead Linewinder. Uh, you can get one of them for $8. It is not customizable. Uh, and again, very time enough consuming. You have to grab the two red handles pictured there and crank in the entire web row. Uh, now we're moving on to promotion partners. As we launch, we want you to spend $100 a month on Facebook advertisements. Uh, we believe Facebook advertisements is a good way for us to go uh, because most people go to Facebook. Facebook are adult males, uh, and that is our target customer. Uh, we can also advertise specifically to uh, water sport boating groups, uh, which is good for us. As our company grows, we want to advertise in the Boaters World magazine. Uh, the Boaters World magazine uh, gives us uh, three features for $5,000 a year. Uh, the Boaters World magazine uh, average reader also makes 200000 net income a year. Uh, it's 51 years old. 99% uh, of them own a boat too, so that's good for us. Getting into our cost of goods, we raised our price from our last presentation to $125. This is because talking to our manufacturer and the man who actually built us our prototype, um, machine time and the material cost has obviously fluctuated in recent years. So we're going to be selling it for $124 now. Um, cost of goods is $50.03. This leaves us a gross profit margin of $74.96. Our first year, we were aiming to sell 150 of our rope reel. That would make us just under $19,000. And I'd like to mention that these are seasonal sales uh, because our product is for boats and we believe they'll sell better in summer months. If we get a 100% growth rate between years, we will be selling 2,400 units our fifth year and that'll make us just under $300,000. So we will be selling our product on our company website as well as Marinos and Amazon. Ideally, we'd like to sell the bulk of our products on our company website to get more profit from direct sales. But we will also sell our products uh, at Marinos and on Amazon um, because there are already existing customers. Moving on to minimum value proposition, um, our website.
website is linked in our social media pages, so once you click on the link, it'll bring you to our landing page, which will give you some information about our product, as well as our unique value propositions, which is efficiency, versatility, and safety. And there's also a spot where you can leave your email to give, or ask questions, give concerns, or just like feedback in general. So our MVP results, we uh, took our landing page and we emailed it to around seven marinas. Out of these marinas, three out of the four were very interested. However, they wanted to see a working prototype and to really see how it worked. However, one of the four, Munson Ski and Marine, located in Round Lake, Illinois, wanted to put it on the shelves and see how it would do uh, for around a month and then give us feedback and see how it would do in um, around a month period. Uh, this is our 3D model, as we mentioned. Uh, it is made out of uh, plastic and carbon hybrid, so it's flexible and strong. So if, if it's mounted to the tower with wind resistance and the force of a motor behind it, it's able to flex and be strong enough for the rider. This is a half scale of the actual prototype, uh, so the, much, the other one will be 13 inches instead of six and a half. And we've been using this to show to customers and they can give us feedback and show off the unique value of it. Now moving on to our strategy for our startup, we really wanted to build up our website, our landing page that Britt was talking about, because we wanted to make it more appealing to the customer in hopes that it would increase the conversion rate to um, provide more currency for us. And then we also wanted to really uh, market to gain the reach for the customers in order to, once again, increase the conversion rate. And of course, the legal expenses, which will include our LLC, and then uh, our startup in uh, inventory, which will be for eight months that will be the, um, the price of our uh, rope reels. So we did, um, we will be selling 100 rope reels in month one to eight. So we took the cost of goods, $50.03, and multiplied it by 100. And then that was our cost of goods for uh, our eight, uh, first eight months. <coughs> and then to round it all up, we took all these values that were a necessity of getting our company uh, set and just ready to keep building. And these were all key to uh, getting us to ask you for fourteen and a half thousand dollars in exchange for thirty-seven point six percent of our company after post-money valuation of thirty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. This will give you guys an interest rate of return of forty-nine point five percent and a money multiplier of seven point four. At the at the end of the five years, we would hope to sell our business to Mastercraft, which is a uh, boating manufacturer. In Is there a spring loading built into the prototype? No, not yet, yet, no. Tell us about what you learned about the complications with that, and is it built into the cross you've been sold? Like, how do you, how'd you estimate the ability to put a spring load in? Oh, well, I found the cost of goods uh, for a, a large tape measure spring loaded reel and just used that to the model. But the man, uh, there's a manufacturer that's going to build this for fifty dollars, correct? Yeah. And are they going to build the spring loaded into the plastic? No, the, the, we get all the pieces and then we have to assemble it. You have to assemble it. And yeah. how much is the actual plastic portion uh, of it? But the plastic uh, was like seven dollars per uh, unit, but we have to like have a mold built for it uh, so they can like inject the plastic and have it molded for us. Okay, so you need to buy. It. Buy a mold first. Yeah. One needs to be made. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And how much will the mold cost? That will, yeah, that will cost around two thousand dollars at the start, and then from there we can build as many prototypes as we want. Okay. The seven dollars. So once you have a mold, your actual cost of goods sold yeah. will go down with time. Seven dollars for the plastic, and how do you get? What's the rest of the cost of goods sold to get it to fifty? Uh, 
on the actual prototype, there would be like two clamps on the bottom. Uh, there would be screws to attach the clamps, uh, and nuts, the spring-loaded reel, and then the case. Okay, and you have the detail for all of that. Did you take up that marine uh, shop owner on his offer? Of course, yeah. We, we said we'll bring it in, in in person, and like we were talking to them over the phone, so we wanted to talk to them in person. Uh -huh. A lot of them seemed super interested, but they wanted to like. It's kind of hard to grasp, like if you're just talking about it, like if you don't really have a visual like this. So they want to like see it, you know what I mean? But they like if the idea is what I'm saying, then they they like it. So did you mock up something to put up on the shelf and see what people's reactions were? We have it now. So how long do you think it would take you if if you had funding right now to be able to, you know, have a product uh, on the shelf somewhere? Or you know, selling it on your website or Amazon, anyway. Well, we still need to source the reel. We have everything sourced. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how the reel will actually work in the larger uh, model. Model. So, a month. Yeah, probably three months. Three months. <clears throat> and are you planning to do any testing on? Because I'm assuming that's going to be carrying a lot of load. Um, yeah. There will definitely be testing. We have, I, mean, I have like four people lined up that want to do testing, just to like see how it works and get them to be good feedback. So, you know, make videos and stuff, and the videos that we can put on our landing page, so we can show a customer how it works, stuff like that. So, can I be the fifth? Uh, I, I have a 22 foot master craft. Sure. Been skiing for over 50 years. Hard to believe an old guy like me. <laughs> um, so, I love the presentation. I think that the tie on the time benefit and the value proposition is really, really well executed. I think you guys have done a really nice job with the market and the channel research. Um, I agree kind of my colleagues here talking about the product. At this point, it's all, in my view, it's all about the product. I think that you guys should become singularly focused on getting that product project done. There's, as also uh, being a manufacturer, there's going to be a lot of manufacturing issues on getting the spring integrated in there with the right tension to get it to stop when you want it to stop. There's some mechanical things in there that are going to be tricky, I suspect, um, to get right on the prototype. I, I, I think that getting to the prototype stage is clearly the, the right path for you all. I think it's an exciting proposition. I'll, when you have a prototype, I'll be the fifth to try it. I'll put it on my boat. So I'd love to, you know, to see it. So I, I I think that's the that's the real you know the real the key next challenge for you guys is to get that product done so that you can have something to sell. Sure. Is, is there a smaller um, like ratchet mechanism that you can size a prototype like a smaller prototype just to develop something that you can use to you know emulate a, the the right size unit? Yeah, and that's what I was talking about with the guy who actually built this, they sell like laser jet printer stuff, like he's like all into that type of stuff. And he was saying like, if you guys want help in the future, like if this goes well, I can help you build a smaller scale prototype if that's what you want, just to show people. We also went to Home Depot trying to find parts that would fit in the smaller prototypes we could bring in here. But we ended up finding one that would fit in the 13 inch model, uh, it looked like kind of one of the ratchet models uh, with a central coil and then we could put the rope around it and we use it. So walk me through this sits on top of the boat. On top of the tower of the boat. Yeah, so we're targeting boats, nicer boats that have the, the weight power. Uh, and then there is an anchor point on top, so it would be anchored near there. So does all the rope come out of that and then attach to the ski pylon? Yeah, that would be like the anchor. Yeah. Um, but it, it's great because for like a beginner skier, say they like to be closer to the boat just because it's easier to maneuver. So it's also like, if you didn't have this, you'd have to tie a separate knot in your rope to make the rope shorter. But with this, you know, you can pull it out to say, you know, only 40 feet instead of 75 feet, lock it in place, you know, so it also doubles as that. But that, that doesn't take the tension of the skier behind the boat though, right? That's what we're planning on having it do. That? Yeah. That's a lot of tension. It that, is, yeah. That different uh, length rope out is really unique, as you guys know, for skiing, waking, and all that stuff. Three different, three different lengths of a rope. So yeah, I, I think the, the value proposition is really strong for people that want to be able to have a person chosen to uh, 
but quickly convert over to whomever wants to jump in the water next. To, to exactly, yeah. That's one thing you may want to consider given that. I think this tension issue is real. Like it's going to be harder to yeah. hold it at 40 feet. When it's fully extended, it's probably a little easier actually because there's no, there's no less tension. You may want to think about uh, if it's too complicated or it's, it's going to take a lot of time to solve that, go to market with just one length and one very simple feature. This is a 70 foot version or a 40 foot version, whatever you think is the most popular and just solve for that feature before you build out a, a final product that is more advanced that has you know multiple lengths associated with it because that could take you so much time and you know any startup uh, you only have two resources time and money and you don't want to waste a whole lot of time trying to get the perfect product uh, you know you get a product that's good enough and and then version two could be better and version three could be better I just pile on sort of on the focus on the product because I think what your product has as an advantage is it's not hidden inside something. Yeah. It's going to be up top. And if it's being used, people are going to see it being used. And if they like the concept, they're going to be asking, hey, where'd you get that? That's cool. So I don't know that you need to focus money on Facebook or focus money on these things. Focus on the product, get the product, and then I think word of mouth is going to start helping you out as well. You'll figure I mean, it out after you get the product. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I think your uh, your exit plan. Um, you might want to consider doing even a licensing agreement with Mastercraft to get this thing started. I, I think that's a great choice. Uh, they're clearly a high end motor. They do a lot of promoting of these types of products. So yeah, I, I think that's a real good idea for it. And think about you know the one thing that's a little you maybe you've already thought about it but didn't come clear in the presentation is if you're going to sell this for $125 and you're going to sell it you know, through your website, you're going to make the full $75. Yeah. You sell it through Amazon, there's an affiliate fee to sell through Amazon that you won't make that full margin. And then if you sell it through a retailer, there's a wholesale <coughs> retail model that has very different you know, margin profiles to it. Like, they won't buy it for, for you know, it, they won't buy it for 125 and try because they got to make money too, yeah. right? So, but hey, all of that can be figured out after you, after you know Pat's advice, which is you know really solid, is get the product built. Is there a, a, short, a last question? Is there a shortcut on the on the plastic housing that you could 3D print ten of them or something like that? Is it is it feasible the way that is? I'm surprised the injection mold is only two thousand dollars. Yeah, they're usually like forty, fifty thousand right. dollars. One one idea I have for you guys on the product is um, all shops that have <coughs> the airline have these big reels that basically do what you're talking about. The airline can go out up to fifty feet. It can be stopped and then it can be reeled up based on a tub. So that might be something that might help you with the product to understand the mechanisms behind the spring, uh, the, the tensioning, how to get the right pull out. Um, every gasoline shop or gas station or shop, automotive shop or even manufacturers have these airline basically retrievers that, that keep the pull of these all recoiled up into a, a reel just like you're speaking of. Obviously it's not a rope, but um, if it can do an airline, That's a really interesting idea. You could buy one and repurpose it. Yeah. You know, hack you your way into this product, yeah. product yeah. and yeah. and just see if it you know works, <laughs> and then go to re you know yeah. engineer so look, look that up on. I'm sure there's some on Amazon. Um, just under uh, air pneumatic lines, uh, and it's a, a hose cat. We'll check it out and make sure you come up with something. Anyone care to see the prototype? Yeah, sure. Awesome. And yeah. is the team? 
in it, or is this a great um, learning experience? I came up with the idea, so I'm pretty passionate about it. I don't think they are wanting to take the class next year, but I'm definitely you know wanting to take this forward. So I have to, you know there's people in the accelerator group that definitely want to join the team, so we can get a rolling. Great. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.